founder talking about his business idea and he'll be sharing his journey with us thank you so much ravish for joining us today we are delighted to have you on board and we are ready to get information about your business proposal thank you so much you can share your screen sir so uh, at retail star we started in 2016 right it has been quite a journey so because i am from a software industry so i thought uh, that uh, there is a i'm in huge uh, delay in technology adoption with the retail industry right so we started with uh, you know uh, point of sale system and we intended to sell it to the people but but once we tried to give it to certain people then we realized that they are not competent enough to be using that kind of technology so we went ahead and uh, uh, started uh, one of our store right so and in that generally uh, where we have reached is that now we are offering 100% managed grocery outlets with genuine and realistic returns right right now we are collaborating with the people uh, who have spaces or some sort of money and have some sort of commitment where we can eliminate the bottlenecks uh, we can eliminate the discomforts and uh, the bottleneck is the theft in these stores and then is and, you know inventory management then procuring and all that kind of stuff because you know uh, comparing this with any other retail industry this is very extensive one because in this we are dealing with probably 350 brands 10000 sku so it is beyond individuals to manage all these things in an efficient way so this is this is one of our store in sector 35 and we even initially made some losses in our first store then we went down to make a new outlet in chandigarh uh, measuring 4 4000 square feet sector 22 and it's still running this is in business for almost 3 uh, uh, years now uh, at this point of time we have stores in jnk and in chandigarh which is my hometown let's see what are the various problem with this grocery retail because at this point of time everybody wants to win the grocery business because people are seeing this as a recession proof business whatsoever happen the grocery store will always be running your foods can go out your clothing can go out and every other business can go out because of you know different different you know scenarios maybe the virus or maybe other things right so the but then again grocery is not an easy business to do why it is not a easy business to do because there are 350 plus brands that means you have nestle unilever parley g britannia and the list goes goes on right? and uh, and this is something that you need to deal with when you are running a store that is only 2000 square feet right and when individual is running a business um, a grocery outlet then he is facing the problem with pricing on a day one you talk to the vendor you talk to the dealership that okay you wanted to purchase these thing what at what price he will be supplying you up you will uh, fix some pricing and all that but once you are regular customer with them they will increase the pricing because there is no way for you to be confirming that uh, how the you know uh, at what price they are selling you the goods right now this specially happens with the pulses spices and all that thing and uh, after that is fmcg have a wafer thin margins right it is not like operating your adidas stores where your margin is 60% 50% and uh, whatsoever products you are selling they are high value right it, if you are into you know let's say somebody is opened up adidas showroom or something like that then what happens is that even in a small time customer you are making one or two sales your bucket size is you know 3 to 5000 in grocery your bucket size can be from uh, 10 rupees to 5000 or 10000 right but majority of the people will be buying uh, and in a size of 150 to 200 rupees I have started almost every store in my city, Chandigarh, and Reliance Fresh, maybe Easy Day. They have an inventory control. None of the other vendor, they don't have any sort of inventory control. They take the goods, check the bill, put it into their store or whatsoever storage capacity they have put it, and then they forget again, right? So for them to be managing their affair, they have to be present in their store because let's say somebody bought a uh, hundred packets of Maggie, right? and uh, they just took it put inside the store 
And whenever they are not sure, somebody took 40 out of that. There is no way for them to be, you know, uh, realizing that those many packets has been lost because they are not entering those bought goods into the system. Yes, they are doing the sale based on their point of sale system, but nobody is actually doing an entry. And there are a reason why they are not doing an entry because this is a very tedious job just to input all the items that individual is having in their store. They have to first build an inventory list, which is probably 10,000 strong products. You have to save the barcodes. You have to give them names. You have to save their MRPs and all that. And then with the time, these barcodes keep on changing. Their prices keep on changing. So on average, if somebody have to do that inefficiently, not with efficiency, then their cost may be 50,000 to 1 lakh rupee per store. Still, they are not able to do it. Then, right, and after, you know, your regular stores, they don't really have any marketing tools, right? They don't send an SMS to their customer. They, 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 they don't really record uh, who is coming to their uh, store. We, we do all kind of these things. So, because there is no communication, right? You are not getting an SMS from your, uh, you know, uh, neighborhood grocery store that they have these discounts and deal running on their products. And end of the day, you know, uh, there is not even a reporting method, right? They count the cash, whatsoever cash is collected. They don't really have, uh, you know, insight on what products are moving uh, fast, what products are moving slow, whether to keep a certain product, whether not to keep that particular product. So a lot of these things are missing in all these stores. These things are available with your only uh, Reliance Fresh, your Easy Day. You'll always get a, a message from Easy Day that they are giving this discount. They have celebrating, you know, uh, seven big days. You will get it from your big basket and all that, but not from your neighborhood stores because they, they simply cannot afford it, right? And then the last one is you're, you're finding a trained staff, right? For a regular store, finding a trained staff is even more challenge, right? Because people are generally using their mark or there is a matrix, right? They are pathetic softwares, right? They are not actually uh, the softwares of today's era. They are probably the software that was good in year 2000 to 2004. The technology changed a lot. So mo uh, these are the basic problem. And actually the list is pretty longer, right? But let, let's not get there. So we have come up with a solution, right? And it is not that uh, we had, we anticipated those problems the, on the day one, but as we entered this segment, the first is that we have a most efficient and effective billing system. Ours is only store where we have a tablet installed for a customer side. Uh, my staff is making a billing um, on their computer screen and there is a secondary screen for the customer who is also seeing that whatsoever is being scanned if somebody told us to remove that remove that product he is seeing that that a product is actually getting removed from their shopping cart then we have this automated inventory control and purchase management our purchases purely driven based on how much we are selling our computer calculates uh, that we sold a uh, uh, maybe 3000 Maggie packets in last two months. So we try to maintain an inventory for 15 days. What we'll do, we'll divide 3000 by four and then, then round it off to a you know, cartoon size, whatsoever cartoon size it is. So depending on weather change in winter, your cold cream sells more and in summer, your cold drink sells more, the system automatically optimized what kind of inventory you need. The only pre-requirement for that is that you have to enter whatsoever you are purchasing into your system. Then we have this automated GST calculation. So our advantage comes down that uh, because we are maintaining the list of 10,000 products and all those 10,000, you know, uh, that list is being maintained at a centralized location. So there is no in cost on the individual store for maintaining the, that list. So whatsoever these costs, we, I was talking about 50,000 to one lakh for every individual store. So we are eliminating that cost. Then again is when we started it off, right? Our margins were probably 5% poorer as compared to the people who were already in this industry. But with the time we realized we reached out to company, now our margins is probably 5% better than your average neighborhood Kriana stores or, or grocery supermarket store. We have this CRM, 
well then crm system where we do all kind of promo activity we we even send the acknowledgement to every customer who is making a shopping let's say a, cust- a customer because uh, we treat their phone number as a primary key because phone numbers are always unique so whenever customer come we ask them their uh, phone number when they give us a phone number system if that particular customer is already in our system we just display their name location and everything and he feels happy about that and then is the check on theft and reduction in expiry so uh, h- how that does happen is that expiry is being controlled because our system monitors that what what product we will be selling what products are fast moving what should be ordered more what should be ordered less and all that and and for the theft check right nobody is actually monitoring the cameras all the time so your only method is that whatsoever is entering let's say we bought a 100 units of some product and somebody stole 40 units of that right but because we entered into the system now our computers know that okay uh, we got 100 units we sold 60 40 units are still available in the store it will not make a new request for those products to be purchased so the staff member will come to know or the store manager will come to know that okay this product is not on the shelf and why the system is not ordering this stuff so that is an automated check so somebody have to declare that product that okay we lost those 40 items so everything everything every sku that is lost is accounted for and this is what we are actually offering we have the billing system which is state of the art and there is no one like us right uh, and we would um, the people who will be interested in knowing this will be uh, able to give the demo of that then is the accounting so we do everything in black and white and every penny that is being spent in our store is being accounted for even if we are providing our staff with the samosas and all that somebody have to make an entry of that into our system that we spent 100 rupees on plumbing we spent 300 rupees on purchasing samosas and then then comes is the gst right it is very difficult for uh, uh, doing the gst thing and in fact uh, people are not able to do it everybody is filing gst in a retail store based on some sort of judgments not actually on uh, what product they bought how much gst slab they were falling in because there are 10000 skus in that and your gst starts from 0 then 12 18 28 and then on the cold drinks there is an additional 12% cess but in our case we are probably spending more than 50000 to 1 lakh to maintaining all these things their hsn number and all that but we are doing it at a one location so any store that we are adding to the system they don't really have to be bearing that cost of accounting that maintaining hsn number and everything then then we we have the crm all these things are all you know into built into a one system whenever somebody is shopping he's getting the text sms that you thank you for shopping you shop for this much amount and you save this much money in that then again, if somebody is not coming to our store, for let's say uh, somebody has not visited our store for three months, then what we'll do is we'll send them a four digit promo code that, okay, please come back to our store. We are giving you a 5% additional discount. Let's say if somebody is not with, have not visited our store for more than six months, we'll send them a promo code that, okay, this is a one-time promo code. You come to our store, do a shopping, we'll give you a 10% additional. So a lot of these kind of activities do happen then we maintain the uh, graphs that how many new customers we are getting how many total customers are there and how many of them are repeat in that so this is all into crm and reporting and this is the uh, financial part where i actually want to spend my time so um, I'm not sure whether you are aware about this but these reliance fresh easy days and berla more stores are into doing sale which is probably 90 lakh so 60 is their minimum sale where uh, you know that they should be doing on a monthly basis to make make those stores viable right in our case this is not the scenario so what exactly happened is our margin remains at this 15 percent and uh, let's say we'll start with the very basic thing let's say we are making a sale of 
five lakh rupees, which is somewhere around fifteen to twenty thousand on a daily basis. Though generally even a small booth does that, right? Our margins remains the at this fifteen uh, percent, so it will generate us at seventy-five thousand. And our running expenses, our running expenses will remain around one lakh rupee. And uh, it doesn't really matter what you do, but there is always some theft there is always some bottles that will be broken there is there will always be some products that will be expired we are able to reduce it down to 0.5 percent that is 50 pesos when you um, compare it to 100 rupee but we take it as a one percent so if we are doing a sale of five lakh our expenses are one lakh rupee for running that particular store and our theft five thousand so we are probably at a loss of 30,000 rupees. And uh, what we are offering that, that if somebody is coming on board and spending uh, a, a crore rupee with us to set up a state of the art uh, store, we give them a minimum guarantee of 1% return. But then again, this guarantee is not for everyone. It is based on the evaluation, whether that particular location have a scope to be able to generate us that kind of money or not. So generally what happens is that uh, uh, one crore store is able to make a 30 lakh sale on a monthly basis. And with the increase in sale, our margins also increases. So at 30 lakh, our margins are somewhere around 4.8 lakh. Our expenses have increased from 1 lakh to 1.4 lakh. And our theft and breakage remains this 30,000 rupee. So our margin after expenses, 3.1. And because now over here, minimum guarantee is covered. So, so uh, what we do is that we divide whatsoever money we are making from that store 50 50. 50% 50 goes to the franchisee, 50% will go with the franchiser. And uh, so, if somebody is uh, having a store where he could be getting a uh, 1 lakh rupee rental, then their break even is somewhere around 15 lakh. 15 lakh is more like uh, your uh, uh, 50,000 sales on a daily basis. Generally, every every store, every supermarket store is able to do that. But problem with other people is that, you know, most of the people are going out of business because they have to deal with the rental. They have to deal with the expensive staff. They cannot really control the inventory. They are, they, they are not really knowing, uh, you know, what products they should be promoting, what product they should not be promoting. And we expect a well-executed store to be generating 60 lakh in sales within a year's time. So on a 60 lakh sale, our margins remain at 17%. Margin percentage is 17%. So our net margin will be 10 lakh 20,000. Because we are making a uh, sale of 60, our theft and breakage will be 60,000. Our running expenses will be 2 lakh. So our net margin will remain 7.6. So that gets divided into two parts. This is 3.8 lakh each. And, and this is where we see ourselves. We are not very, very optimistic that we'll be able to reach up, uh, uh, we'll be able to do the sales compared to Reliance Fresh or other supermarket store operating in that size. We have to be realistic about that. Those stores are having a higher operation cost for sure but their margins are also higher. So this is how our uh, investment costs stack up. Uh, this is for a store outlet that is 3,000 to 4,000 square feet in area. And uh, the total investment in such store will be 1.24 lakh. We'll be spending somewhere around 40 lakh in the setup, which will include almost everything from your paint job to your carpeting. So over here we'll be launching, uh, we'll be charging a launch fee that is two lakh plus GST, and there will be a additional fee of ten lakh plus GST, which comes down to eleven lakh and eighty thousand for setting up the store. Actual cost of the setup can be between forty to fifty lakh, but because we are doing it on you know on a repeat basis, we have set vendors where we get you know purchase the things at. Uh, cheapest possible price. So if an individual have to set up a similar store, they will be probably end up spending 50 to 60 lakh, but we are able to do it in 40 lakh. Now what happens is that for whatsoever reason, if someday 
you have to exit you feel that uh, the franchisee feel that they don't really want to continue or the store is not probably uh, you know generating them the kind of return they they would have expected or they have some other business to do right they can always claim a 80% of the money that they have spent in inventory and a setup cost because inventory is uh, we'll take out the inventory from the store we'll move it to another store and we'll sell it off uh, from there so that's all fine 20% is a bare uh, you know minimalistic cost because we have to take it from there put it to the entry system and all that then there is a cost of 40 lakh 40 lakh is for the setup so if a franchise or individual store owner has to shut down their store then this 40 lakhs probably will, will be generating them not more than 10 lakh because you know whatsoever rack have bought billing system they have they have purchased um, electrical products they have uh, purchased your refrigerators your air conditioning and all that but in our case we'll take them out we'll put in a new store we'll repaint it and we'll put it in a new store and so so we are actually not losing any money in that as well so 20% is a very reasonable cost that the franchisee has to be bearing. So because launch advertising is something that is already done and dusted, so that is non-refundable. Franchisee fees are something that we are charging for our expertise because we are not charging any money on a monthly basis for running the store. We'll only be making money when, when the store will be making money. Then, then the last thing is your solar power plant. I think this is a new thing that we are adding to our stores now. And based on a location, uh, this is a very viable option. Uh, we have a uh, one store in sector 35 Chandigarh. So we have set up a 20 kilowatt uh, uh, solar power plant that is generating us a 90 to 100 unit on a daily basis. So we would like that to be put up on every store because that is additionally making our store electricity free. Our average consumption in an individual store that is 3000 square feet is between uh, 100 to 130 units. So if we are able to generate 100 units on a daily basis, we are only paying for the 30 units, which is almost nothing. So because your investment is also getting you a return, Right. Let's say somebody um, we are asking people to be with us for a period of 18 months. So somebody invested 1.24 lakh with us. His 80 lakh is secure because that is we will refund that particular company, particular party whenever we'll be taking back the inventory and the assets. So you are also generating a new asset, which is 10 lakh rupee for a 20 kilowatt hour solar power plant. So that will remain with you. That will not be taken out. Then is your MG collected. MG is a minimum guarantee. You'll be also getting paid one lakh minimum. So your net generation will be somewhere around one crore, eight lakh rupee over a period of uh, 18 months. So you initially invested uh, 1.24 uh, crore and you are getting it 1.08 crore. Yes, you are losing money. You are losing money in the interest that you would have got 8% interest on your investment while laying in the bank. But then again, uh, in banks, people would have not been generating more than 8%. Here, the opportunity is to generate 12% to maybe 20, 30, 40%, right? And whenever somebody is planning to invest with us they, they, they must make up their mind there are no exponential returns in in these kind of businesses but they are very stable they are recession proof right if if you are having your own asset and you are not really willing to give it on a rental then then this makes a perfect sense because the business will generate you somewhere around uh, you know 12 to 18 percent at minimum even if it is you know not doing very great so this is um i'm taking you to the breakup of this right this is how your investment sounds like your setup cost is somewhere around 28 percent and this is your you know inventory cost and franchisee fee says your solar panel is something that is refundable and your your launch advertising is this one 2.36 lakh i have to take this away but uh, never mind I, I think i just opened up some other so a franchisee owned franchisee operated i mean this is not really the model that we are actually looking but we do operate based on the location evaluation then the second one is the most popular one which is franchisee owned and company operated then this then third one is 
uh, company owned and company operated. So uh, second is the model where we'll be, you, most of the people will be interested and this is the one that makes more sense. So now you, you don't have to be thinking about Reliance Fresh, Easy Day, DMART Store, or, or something like that. They are all together in a different league. You know, we might be purchasing the things at 20% of markup. They probably be purchasing the things at 35 or 40% markup, right? But they have other expenses. You have to see wherever you are planning to open up a store. Can you cater to 1,000 family? If somebody can cater to 1,000 family, then, then you are making a good money there. 1,000 family on average, you know, a family on average makes a purchase of 3,000 to 5,000 on a monthly basis. If you are having a 1,000 family associated with you, that effectively means you are doing a sale of 30 lakh. So let's consider the least possible here. Even in 1,000 family, we are generating the 30 lakh sale and the cost of operation of that store will never ever be more than 1.5 lakh. And we can guarantee for that, right? And at 30 lakh, our margins stands at 4.5 lakh. And then uh, from 4.5 lakh, if we are reducing our cost of operation, which is 1.5 lakh, we are still having uh, 3 lakh spare. 3 lakh get divided into two parts, that is 1.5, 1.5 each. That effectively means you are getting somewhere around 18% return if you can cater to 1,000 times. What is our divider, right? We are probably the, the only realistic chain who is doing everything online. Whatsoever sale is being done any of the store or what the store that an individual own you're always seeing that particular sale on your phone real time your GST calculation is real time everything is uh, centralized that gives us an advantage of reducing the cost of managing the SKU managing the barcode report generation and everything it is just like that we set up the store and we are ready to go and and then is, this is fully automatic. Fully automatic being that there is no one making the decisions what needs to be purchased. It is the computer based on what we are purchasing and what we are selling. You know, we can make you know um, an error in, in doing some judgment, but computers don't do that. Our competition is probably from the local, you know, uh, let's say you are in some location, there are, you know, 10, 15 small time Kriana stores are there, right? Those are our competition. Right? We are not really looking to compete with Reliance Fresh or more store or easy day stores, right? It's not like that we cannot compete with them, but uh, whenever we try to compete with them, if the other party starts bleeding, we might not be able to bleed. When we compare ourselves to our primary competition, which are the local grocery stores, we have a purchase advantage. We are buying the things at five to 7% price that is lower we are more organized. We have a CRM system. We can interact with the customers. And we will certainly be having a stores that looks better, feel better. And because we are doing the purchase, which is five to 7% cheap compared to these guys, we can surely be selling it at a price which can be 5% or 10% below the MRP. Now let's make some realistic growth projections basically based on how many number of families you can cater um, because I, I live in a Chandigarh so there are probably uh, 4,000 families in a one sector so even if somebody can cater to a half of the sector then their profit will be six to seven lakh margin will be six to eight lakh but depending on a different different kind of locations if even if somebody can reach out to thousand families, they can their store can be making three lakh rupee in profitability. 15, 1500 family, four to four point lakh in profitability. And this is something that we should be looking at. And how many regular routine customer can we get from a given location? This is this is what we make our projections. So um, I'm just going to summarize this. Retail sales at low risk and medium return. Why I'm calling it low risk and a medium return is because even if our store is failing, our losses are minimalistic. We are spending 1.25 crore and we are get, uh, going back with 1.08 crore. I think in a failed business, that is very good, right? And 
Why I'm saying medium return is that I, I have been seeing presentation where people, somebody is telling that they have in a 50% return, they're having a 100% return or something like that, where people are getting their money back in one year's time. I mean, those business doesn't really appeal to me or to any anyone who is actually looking to make make an investment. If somebody is having that good of a business model, they don't really need a franchise. They can always get a money from the VCs. They can always get a money from the bank to be able to, uh, you know, uh, expand their businesses. And then, then, then w why it is low risk? Because this is recession proof. Doesn't matter if we are in a recession, if we are in a virus age, if we are in a, there is a property slump, there is some other problems, whether there are riots or something else, I mean, the grocery store is something that will always be allowed to open. So then again, uh, at RetailSar, we have a system to run a grocery store with the least expenses. If you will be trying to run a grocery store yourself in a 3,000 to 4,000 square foot area, your expenses will be somewhere around 3 lakh to 4 lakh. We are able to do that in 1.5 lakh rupees. We at Retail Start doesn't charge any monthly fee to run the business. Now I'm putting a stress on this. We are not charging any monthly fee to run the business. Rather, we will only make our money if the franchisee will be profitable. So what does it mean that we will only be choosing the locations where we see that we can generate some sort of profit. It is not that somebody is coming to us that, okay, I want to set up, set up a franchisee and we will say, hey, new lead and we need to close, we need to make money out of it. Because we will only make money if the business will be profitable. We'll give you a 12% return, though only on a location, that seems good for profit. Not, this is not to everyone, right? We'll clearly tell the people who are trying to get associated with us that how much they should be expecting from their locations. And then at Retail Star, we will run your business for minimum of 18 months. Let's say we started your business today and we are not able to generate money out of your store even after the 18 months. Then we are losing money in that particular store, even if there is no NG because we are spending our energies to uh, make things happen. We'll be spending money into the marketing. We'll be spending money into uh, uh, you know, making the supplies to that store. So 18 months is a time that we will be running your business. If we are still not able to make a profit out of that, we'll call it quit. And we will refund 80% of your fixed assets and the inventory cost. So the, I think next point is same, right? We'll take back all the movable assets, which is your racks, your computer system, your billing tables, your refrigerators, your air conditioning, your lightning. And uh, we'll try to, uh, you know, uh, refurbish those things and we'll be putting it a new store, new location. So 20% depreciation, you know, when we are uh, you know, telling you that we will only charge you a 20% depreciation, even in that scenario, we are not losing money because we'll spend some money you know, taking out the assets from there, refurbishing them, and that will not be more than 20%. A few people will be asking us that, uh, what will be the best store model? I think the best store model will be with our experience, right? With our experience uh, of running uh, some stores uh, in GNK, you'll be amazed to know that uh, we even have a store in Punch, that is Pakistan border, 200 kilometers from Jammu, and it's a hilly road, and it takes five to six hours, even by a car, by starting from Jammu, to reach that location. Why we are able to operate is because we have a franchisee there who is willing to supervise that store. We are paying him 1%. We, we have made an arrangement with that particular guy that uh, whatsoever stock we are supplying, it is your guarantee warranty that you have to ma make sure that uh, nobody is stealing that up and we will pay you 1% of the sale. Uh, we recently set, set this store up in sector 35B, 365 and 366 uh, SEO on the Himalaya, almost the, this is in the heart of city. So this is how the look and feel of our store is, right? If you try to see this store, we are having 
we haven't spent much on the you know uh, paint job it is minimalistic we have the lights lightning the all these lights are reusable we have put up uh, air conditioning unit these are the uh, three phase air conditioning unit that they, they are efficient and the lesser number of unit means that even if we have to move the acs out then our cost should be on a lease side then then comes is our uh, primary investment in this is that the racks we are using the most premium grade and we are getting it at uh, uh, you know average price that you will be uh, seeing it in a market when you will you know individual will be going to make a purchase of a racks they are all white the top grade that one can get in india flexible the height is good durability is good and then then we have the pricing strips and all that we just starting this out so this is how we it looks from outside and uh, this is the entry point entry and exit further inside more inside we are even keeping a sufficient ample space for the people to be moving we don't really have an empty space inside our racks because we you know our aim is to put more and more variety in the amount of space that is available to us every corner of the store is defined like soap and deodorant cleaning and laundry shaving is on the other side soap drink is on this side your confectionery on the left side these are our billing counters we have a state of art billing system will not discuss on that at this point of time uh, this is how we put our pricing you you know depend nobody does like that right yeah whenever you go to reliance fresh or in easy day store did they put up their pricing inside the strips right and sometimes customer are confused whether it is a price of the item above or an item down and 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 then again the you know pricing is very small over here we have put up the pricing by making it an arrow and we have a very unique and efficient efficient system of doing that like this product is himalaya anti dandruff shampoo cream 100 ml now there is an arrow upside so that clearly mentioned that the mrp on this product is 80 rupees and we are selling it at 72 rupees right similar way we have a head and shoulder uh, the price is 275 we are selling it at 248 so i think this is our usp you know even the most premium store cannot really be able to do that maybe they should be able to do that right maybe in future but they are not doing at this point of time so every product in our store has to be labeled this way and the cost of doing that for your you know regular store is very high in our case it is negligible we have a wireless scanner we have a one printer somebody is moving to the shelf they are just scanning the product on a one shelf and then give a command from there and there is a print out that has taken out on your your regular laser printer then they are cutting the sheet and putting those items you know putting those pricing here so this is that's it from my side right and uh, now we can probably switch over to uh you uh, mr ravish kumar uh, i think this presentation uh, was very elaborate uh, uh, that you gave and i also like to thank all our viewers who have joined today on this sunday edition and friends i'd like to maybe start with saying that franchise india is a get list and it's an endeavor uh, to advise each one of you on prospective business opportunities uh, that you see and at the uh, same time i also uh, maybe uh, advise people to make a responsible choice of uh, making decisions and uh, do self evaluation look at the industry growth uh, look at how your markets behave uh, in that particular category look at the competition and do a very detailed uh, brand assessment of the company that you choose to uh, undertake uh, in preston so we shall pick up some questions i saw a lot of questions uh, uh, which have uh, come in and first and foremost maybe we like to start with the business model itself uh, we did uh, understand that the current model that you are looking to maybe uh, expand is a foco model where the franchisee makes the investment and the entire responsibility of running uh, the day to day operation lies with the company which is you now in this case uh, my my first uh, question uh, would be one uh, on the location and i saw that on the last slide uh, where it was mentioned that there is a 12% guaranteed return on the investment now even this uh, guaranteed return is only on locations which will do well and while yes, the investment we... is same across all location 
Now, what happens to the locations uh, which are not doing well or would not do well? Uh, because uh, here, the franchisee is not in the running seat. You know, you're operating the business. Yes. And he is not running the day-to-day -day operations, and he has no uh, operational role, so to say. So, how would uh, the investment of somebody whose location has been assessed by you and not doing well still have uh, uh, the risk being hedged? One question, and second, what kind of assessment do you take when you uh, go ahead in uh, selecting a location? So, basically, first thing is that. Uh... We'll be very clear with uh, people. Actually, somebody came from Abala. He's a hotel guy over there, right? So he is, he, he's got somewhere around uh, 6,000 to 7,000 square foot area. We did an evaluation on their location, right? And uh, we find it to be a good location for various reasons. There is a significant population in and around that particular area. There is no store of the comparable size in that particular area. There is hardly any competition in that area from easy day stores or airline stretch stores, right? And uh, more than that, uh, you know, you have to always, you know, um, give a consideration to big ticket store like Walmart store, your Metro store and all that store. Then a second part of this question is that, that let's say we have given somebody an assurance that uh, because it is us who is actually doing the evolution and we feel that this particular store should be generating this much then if tomorrow that doesn't really happen then the person who have invested money will be getting that minimum guarantee if somebody's uh, i'm sure my screen is being still shared or not no but you know, no no it is not not but that's why the minimum guarantee is because we will give a minimum guarantee only at a location that we see that yes there is a viable business opportunity over here if it is a mistake on our part, then you should not be the one who should be suffering with that. So we are covering that part with the minimum guarantee. Okay, now I'll also maybe take up uh, on the minimum guarantee because I did see some of our viewers talk about that. Now minimum guarantee, how is that paid? Because the investment upfront is close to 1.4 odd lakhs, uh, which we talked about. And how is the investment of the investor de-risked? You know, are there bank guarantees which are being given, PDCs being given, and and how long does it take after the outlet starts operating for the company to evaluate the future of the store? You know, what kind of sales right. can be predicted? Yes. And how is the investor uh, secured on the investment which he is making with you? So, uh, I think uh, when I was talking, uh, I talked franchisee own, uh, owned, company operated, but franchise franchisee monitored so even 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 when the store is being operated by the company we want the franchisee to be involved all the time for the best results right because no employee no employee can do what the franchisee will be able to do because he is the one who is actually interested in making profit out of that store whatsoever inventory is being put up in the store that is in a black and white the control on that inventory the keys of that particular store in most of the cases will remain with the franchise franchisee. So if somebody is invested one crore, 40 lakh assets are being put up there. And we are not very stubborn that you have to give us money if they can purchase the same goods that we want to be put up in a store. They are free to do that. They can procure it themselves. So then is that how that money is secure that money is secure because the control on on all the inventory that are there in store will always be with the franchise if somebody have made an investment of one crore he is holding the keys to that one crore second is mg for 18 months whenever we are doing a mg with somebody for, let's say we have a minimum guarantee of one lakh. We'll be putting up the check number. We'll be issuing the 18 checks of one lakh each uh, for that particular location. We'll mention those numbers, post it checks on a monthly basis, which is a minimum guarantee to be paid to the franchisee. So, so these are the two ways we are securing. First is that franchise is having control over the assets and the inventory. So when we talk about the, minimum guarantee of 12%, now this 12% is on 1.2 crore of investment being made by him or certain part of the investment? certain part, which is the assets and inventory. 
because he is making an investment into the advertisement, launch advertisement. He is making an investment into putting up a solar system wheresoever it is feasible. That your photovoltaic system is an asset that will be built in the name of the party, whosoever is, uh, you know, taking a franchisee. So it is an already an asset generated for that particular person. Not many people are aware about this, but uh, uh, by putting a solar system, you are actually, you know, reducing your uh, electric electrical expenses by half. Sure. You're putting a 10 lakh rupee into and so because I'm, I'm not here to sell the solar system at this point of time, but this is something a very good investment for the commercial businesses. Rented. So the solar system that you talked about. So in many cases, these can also be rented or financed if somebody wants to yeah. take. It is always, always financed, right? You can probably get a loan of uh, 20 lakh on a 10 lakh solar system. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, another, you know, I was doing some calculation. Now, when we talk about this 12 crore, uh, sorry, this 12% of return on 1.24 uh, of investment, which only takes into consideration, you mentioned uh, the uh, asset and the inventory. Now, this is close to about uh, almost 1 crore of the investment and the return of 12% would mean about 12 lakhs is the minimum guarantee that he would get in one year. Yes, yes. Right? So, even if I take uh, five years, he would, uh, at the best, you know, in maybe uh, not a good situation, he will end up getting maybe 60 lakhs back of 1.24 of the investment being made yeah, so my, my question to uh, you is you know what is the term of the uh, agreement being signed with the investor and what if uh, there is no improvement you know one exit option that you gave is if the investor does not want to run and he wants to exit uh, you give him maybe 80 percent of uh, the investment back and the other is for reasons that uh, the company is not able to operate or location is not doing well so in both these scenarios uh, the return that he would get is 80 percent or there's a different uh, return that he would uh, get in, in in both these circumstances so in both these circumstances, the return will be uh, the same, whether we quit or whether the whether franchisee is making, you know, calling us a quit. But the terms are different. When we call it quick, we are doing the immediate return. Mm -hmm. Whenever franchisee is calling us to quit, then we are taking a six months time because we will take the assets out. We will place it at some other location. We will take the inventory out. We will sell it, put it in another store and we will sell it from there because end of the day, we have, we also need to generate the cash back. It is not something that we are, you know, we will be having that kind of money to return every, every investor that, you know, for whatsoever reason, um, let's say five people uh, came to us that they want their money back. Right. So in that scenario, they have to give, you know, th that will be mentioned in our agreement where our, you know, time frame for doing that is a six months because assets needs to be picked up from there. Inventory needs to be picked up from there. It needs to be moved to another store and it needs to be sold from that particular store so that the money can be generated back. It is just that individual store owner cannot do that because we are running multiple stores. We can take the stock out from one store, put it in another store and without losing any money, we are, we are getting it back. It uh, uh, helpful for all to understand. And 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 you want to even talk about the term of the agreement uh, as well. Yes, basically, uh, this will be initially a five-year five-year agreement, right? And mm -hmm. for whatsoever reason, if somebody is calling it, let's say the store is doing good. Sometimes people might feel that if they would have been running the store by themselves, they would have made a better return on that which is actually not the case, but then again, you don't really control what people are thinking, right? So our agreement will prevent the party to rent the same place to another grocery store or run a grocery store at that particular location. Okay. Now in a scenario where the investor only gets his 12% and by the end of fifth year, his entire investment or return on the investment is uh, still not, uh, I would say, capitalized or leveraged, uh, what do we do in in such a situation where the agreement has come in, to a close? In such a situation, he will still be getting the 80% back. But then again, the company will probably be not carrying, taking it to that, uh, you know, five-year period because we will be losing money, right? There can be a scenario where we would like to have that, right? Let's say we are having a big store that is in 7,000 or 10,000 square feet area. And even if it is not doing that great, but it is at least generating us uh, sales. Those sales increase our purchase power. Purchase power means e even just having that particular store on board is giving us a 2% extra across the board. That is a big plus for us. 
So there can be reason to keep it running for a longer. But then again, I don't really see this to be happening with a small time store who are not doing that great. Because no. in that case, there will be an expiry. Because when the you know products are not, this is the FMC, the fast moving consumer goods. When the products are not quickly moving out of the shelf, they tend to expire. When there is expiries happening, so we'll be losing more than 1% that we have you know, factored in. There's another question which I want to pick because I did see inquiries coming from locations even outside uh, Tri-City and north of India. And uh, especially maybe in businesses like grocery, fresh fruit and vegetables, you know, supply chain is a bigger uh, uh, problem and so is vendor relationships. And most of the companies that we see, which are regional players, have, you know, consolidated uh, their position in the region or they've, you know, created a cluster within uh, their regions. Uh, what is your rollout strategy? You want to perhaps uh, maybe consolidate within Tri-City? You want to expand outside? No, I'll, I'll, I'll... I'll tell you, at, at this point of time, let's say I, I'm already dealing with the queries coming from Lucknow, Trivandrum and all these kind of locations. But we are just noting down their phone numbers. We are, we are telling them we are only interested in operating north of Delhi at this point of time, right? Mm -hmm. If there can be a four or five people in that particular location on a single location, then we can probably plan it out but not for an individual store. If somebody is looking to open up an individual store, then because we have to provide the uh, whole supply, so I cannot be providing a supply to Lucknow, which is a 600, 650 kilometer from Chandigarh uh, for a single store. We, my company needs to be setting up a, a you know, supply center over there. And uh, because we are getting a lot of queries already, we are, we are getting a queries from Jalandhar, from Ludhiana, from Ambala, from Karnal, from Patiala, and, and even, even from a small time markets, Moga, Batinda, and all these. And, and we see these small, you know, small markets, right? Not entire three or four city as, uh, uh, as the places where, where we can make more profits. Okay. Because in these locations, we don't really have to give a much of a discounting mm -hmm. to bring people to our store. Our experience, look and feel and all that is sufficient enough to be able to do that. Okay, great. See, another question which I, you know, because you did talk about, uh, you know, the margins in this category are very, very low. So even if when a franchisee is operating uh, by himself, you know, it's sometimes very difficult uh, to make uh, maybe, you know, the operating expenses uh, or, or even cover that because this is a volume business. So unless you have bigger volume, it is very difficult to uh, maybe see uh, the bottom line, uh, maybe in black. And, and when uh, it becomes a FOCO model, so company will also have its own uh, operating cost, you know, which is management cost. Do you see this uh, viable, uh, you know, company operating considering the margins which uh, the industry has? So I think this is a very good question, right? And uh, I started my first tour in 2016, right? And because we, we are only from our IT base, we are the IT guys, we know how to make softwares. We actually didn't know how to do the purchasing, how to actually operate the store, how to actually manage the customer. So even in a one store, we lost somewhere around 40 lakh. We, we opened up in a Mohali, some 700 square foot store. So that was a big loss, right? But we learned from there. We, we learned that we need to our bucket size. We need to increase our purchase size because whenever you are purchasing it from the companies, nobody will give you the margins when you are you know, purchasing the goods and lose. You always have to be buying the products, which is at least uh, one tempo size or something like that. And, uh, and, and as for the margins are concerned, uh, I think our advantage is not really with the margins. Our advantage is with the cost that we have been able to cut down. I have a two stores in Chandigarh, one in sector 22, one in, one in sector 35. Even a sweeper in my store is capable of doing the billing. It is such a convenient and easy to do billing system. And the cost of each employee at my store in Chandigarh is somewhere around 8,000 to 12,000 rupee. I have to pay 12,000 rupee to an individual employee in Chandigarh. But if I am in Batinda, if I am in Ambala, my employee cost will never be going beyond 10,000 rupee. And the every employee is replaceable. Sure. Let's say five employees leave us for some reason. We can put five new people. We can train them within a day's time and they'll be doing the billing next day. Okay. Siji, I think before, you know, because we are already at uh, the end of our uh, uh, webinar, but I'll just take maybe three questions. One, uh, because the operations are run by you, even the operating costs are on the company, which means salaries, uh, rentals, and any kind of ongoing expenses the, are the, is all taken by the company or the franchisee also has a role beyond no, the, that 1.24? 
No, ma'am. Uh, the the uh, franchisee doesn't really have a rules on that. It is just that uh, we set the limits based on our agreement. What kind of agreement we are doing with an individual, depending on the store location, right? In in Batinda, we might not be paying anybody more than ten thousand. In Chandigarh, we will be inclined that yes, employees can even have fifteen thousand. Great. So the entire operating expenses are borne by the company. Second, with your existing no, tools, no, tools... no, not actually borne by the company. Operating expenses are borne by the store. So who that takes the... care of it? Because the entire uh, no, expenses no, are. Uh, uh, and what happens in a case? Because here in a FOCO model, you mentioned that twelve percent guaranteed return goes to the investor. What yeah, if the guaranteed store return is few months is uh, not making money? who takes care of uh, the investment franchisee or the company no no ma'am uh, let me just rephrase this one right sure. let's say we started a store and that particular store is not doing good and we are uh, making a loss of uh, 30000 rupee then it is the company who have to bear that 30000 rupee loss and also pay the 1 lakh minimum guarantee because it is us who is making that particular decision to open up a store there if we see that particular scenario that if this is probably not going to be profitable we can work out on some other arrangements but then it has to be defined in advance so the cost employee salary and everything electricity any maintenance that needs to be done that is on the store that's why i'm calling operating expenses operating expenses needs to be deducted out of the store margins and after deducting the operating expenses what sort of money is left that is divided 50 50 and what we are assuring our franchise is that that they are covered for a 1 lakh rupee so they cannot because you know they, they might have taken a loan from the bank you know they have to be paying at least 8% or 9% on that somebody might have you know few people might have to pledge even their assets where they are doing the business so we we are actually providing them the security on that part okay so which means in case there's a loss a uh, uh, franchisee will also be involved in paying off some percentage of uh, that no. operating expense no 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 franchisee will not be involved in that if there is a loss franchisee will not be involved in that okay. it is just that he will not be making the profit okay so our he costs are so percent and he will not contribute anything on the uh, operating on the loss oh, all right very very helpful second in what kind of sales between these two locations that you currently doing what is the kind of current sales uh, you are making and one you mentioned is an old store which you been operating for last three years and one is a recent store which we saw the pictures of so between these yes. two stores one what is the gestation how many months does it take because over a period of time people would start converting from the existing store they are buying from and they would convert to a new store so what kind of gestation do you think that takes in typical I between these it, two formats kya sale ek uh, reference ke liye agar aap uh, share karna main abhi aapko batata hu jo चन हमारा बाइस सेक्टर वाला वहां पे हमारी जो सेल्स है दे आर समवेयर अराउंड यू नो स्टैग दे स्टैग्नेटेड अराउंड 1 लाख और समथिंग लाइक दैट दैट इफेक्टिवली मींस आवर एक्सपेंसेस ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर स्टोर इज 1.3 टू 1.4 लाख रुपए ऑन अ मंथली बेसिस एंड वी डोंट हैव अ सोलर सिस्टम सेट अप देयर ओके सो दैट इज अ नेगेटिव इन दैट स्टोर 35 uh, 35 स्टोर वी जस्ट स्टार्टेड इट अ फ्यू डेज I think four or five days back only. So we are at somewhere around. We we are yet to start advertising in that store. We are already at fifty thousand sale. Fifty thousand sale means we are gen already generating that one lakh guarantee that we have given to the franchisee. That is being covered. Now, I think it is a very uh, good scenario to discuss about the store we are having in sector twenty two. So basically. Uh, the party who have associated with us they actually didn't want to rent it out so they said they put in some money they are getting some okay. sort of return into that and they are happy with it okay so um, because you know um, there might be people there might be people who are not actually want their property to be rented out so they are saying okay if i'm you know the rental in this particular location might be 3 lakh might be 5 lakh might be you know whatever it is even if they are getting half of that they are happy with it because they remain the owner of place sure. this is a scenario where the you know in a city like chandigarh where the you know uh, the price of properties are very high uh, a showroom in in a city like chandigarh is more like 8 to 10 crore on the ground for something like that so if they are not willing to rent it out they are happy that what of whatsoever money they are making out of that particular location it is just a bonus for them
Sure. And now, uh, is, is there also a possibility because I see some of our viewers also have properties which they own. Is there a possibility where the company takes this property on some kind of a revenue share and the investor does not uh, invest in the overall business? Do you see that as a possibility at this point in time? Uh, no, uh, that is not actually because I'm, I have to be very blunt over here, right? We are not a very big company, right? And that is kind of our advantage and disadvantage as well, right? We haven't gone to the VC stage as yet, right? We, we are not operating a very large network. We have a three, you know, coming up with a three store in Jammu region and we have a two stores in Chandigarh. That is a five store. I, I just wanted to be clear about, I don't really want anybody to be in the dark that, um, that that they should be thinking it as a very big business, but we are very lean business. Why I'm saying lean business is that when we started, we actually didn't had any money in our bank. So our only option was to cut down on our expenses, and we did those right. And now when we uh, try to review the uh, all those situation and all those scenarios, we think that if I had a money, if my company had a money in bank, I would not have taken those steps to cut it down. Now, now all those cost savings is our advantage, right? If I was talking at a launch on my sector 35 store to some of the people who came down there, then I just asked them, you know, uh, asked them to judge what should be the running operation cost of this expense. Nobody quoted me the price. They say three lakh, three to five lakh, uh, something like that. And we told them our, you know, cost of operation of running this store will never be more than 1.5 lakh. And they were amazed, something like that. Where, where the hell you are finding these people? Because for them, that somebody who can operate the computer system has to be trained and specialized, which is not a scenario in our case. Anybody, anybody can stand at the counter. They just need to know how to hold the scanner and they can do the bill. Okay. Yes, okay. there is a difference in it. Right. Yeah, and please, the last question, which I'll pick, and, and the rest of the questions, I feel we can take one on one with the many of our viewers who are coming forward. We did only talk about one of the formats, uh, which is a bigger format, uh, and that's 3,000 onwards of area. Is there a smaller format also available? Because not every location might be viable for putting a, a bigger uh, format like this. Do you see a possibility of putting maybe a smaller format in locations which has a good capital yes. audience and a good yes, capital? yes, yes, right and. Uh, we can even start the stores uh, as low as 20, 20 to 20, uh, 25 lakh rupees, right? Okay. But these will be the stores where, you know, majority of the responsibility will lie with the franchise. Okay. He'll so have the franchise yeah. franchisee operated. And yeah, the bigger franchise format yeah. is where the company takes the responsibility yeah. of responsibility. running and operating. So what franchisee get? He'll get the billing system. He'll get the products. He'll get every product barcoded. He, he don't have to do an anything at his side he'll getting the billing system he'll he'll get the report generation right he'll take care of anything that you know so yes they, they can be operated why we are willing to associate such people is that because they give us they increase our purchase power as our purchase power is being increased our you know profits on every every other store is increasing but uh, what kind of store the company can operate? We will probably not be operating any store more less than you know uh, two thousand square feet, and two thousand square feet store will be uh, you know fifty to sixty lakh investment. Oh. Great, very helpful, uh, Ravishi, and thank you. I like to thank you for coming today on this webinar. Uh, I like to maybe you know tell our audience that uh, Mr. Ravish Kumar is available for any questions that you want to maybe ask. If you have any properties, I did see some of you putting their properties and location along with the area. If you have any uh, specific uh, requirement or discussion that needs to take place and that has not been answered in this session, I would request all of you to please share your information on a hotline number, which has been put on our chat box. And uh, I would request that you share your email ID, your profile, your location, and even your property information if you have any. And we'll be more than happy to uh, maybe you know reach out to Mr. Kumar and uh, line up maybe a call or a meeting uh, with him. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kumar, for our uh, presentation and uh, coming for the webinar for all thank the audience. You, thank you very much. Coming and and before we leave, do you want to give maybe one piece of advice for everyone who's listening to you? I think uh, uh, the only advice from my side is I see a lot of companies who are, you know, promising exponential return. When it comes to delivery of those, they are actually not doing doing much, right? So uh, you should be very careful whenever you are, you know, making an investment. 
uh, I'll take it a little bit further, right? Because uh, we opened up a new store in sector 35. I was the, my company is one who gave them a proposal at one crore. There was another company who gave them a proposal at a two crore rupees. For the same area, same thing. They were, you know, they were even charging them the franchisee fee. But when it comes down, what they were claiming, you will have a 50% return, you will have a 60% return. And when it comes down to the agreement, nothing in that. So be very watchful about that, what, what the other party is claiming. Be very realistic. There are no businesses that can give you an exponential return. You will be lucky if you'll be getting, you know, 18% uh, or 24% 20, uh, return in today's time. So be realistic. Don't expect too much of a return. And, uh, you know, these kind of businesses do take time. To get off very, the very relevant, uh, Mr. Kumar. And this is a word of caution also uh, that even we would like to tell all of you, whenever you take a decision of buying a business, kindly do your thorough investigation, due diligence, uh, maybe visit the existing outlet. You can spend some hours at the outlet, see how the outlets are doing, uh, meet maybe other franchisees in case you know the brand has franchises and only then decide which business is viable for that location. And also understand your own personal fit, you know, the market, the competition, the brand that you're investing in. And maybe the time that you want to put in any any business, only then uh, take a decision, responsible decision of buying a business. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kumar. Over to you, Ashna now. So thank you so much, uh, all our dear participants who have joined us today. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ravish Kumar, for presenting your business ideas as well as giving us the advice on how to select a business. We would like to extend our thanks to our panel member, Ms. Sonia Chaudhary, for sharing insights and advice again on franchise as well as on, on industry. You can connect with us at our business hotline number, which is 9717683838. We do welcome your suggestions, feedback, share your detailed profile on the same number. That will definitely help us in improving our processes. You can connect with the management team of Franchise India Group at their respective LinkedIn ID. That's the information on your screen.